Welcome to Laser Scanning TV. My name is Eric Bergholz from Germany. And today we do a little bit uh, the discovery channel of laser scanning. Especially, we, I like to talk you something to the history of the ferro scanner. Actually, you can see this is the actual series of the ferro machine. It's in um, Focus S Plus. But we like to speak about uh, the history of laser scanning. And for this one, I have a, uh, this uh, nice machine here. <coughs> so that was a laser scanning in, in hot system from around, I think, 2008 something, seven. Um, that is in uh, Faro Photon 120. And this was the, the second series of, the, of this kind of scanner. Maybe somebody have seen this scanner. Um, they have a very nice nickname in the Engl in English one. They call him the wrist block scanner from the construction sites. But I like to tell you a little bit more how we come from the machine to this machine. In um, like um, maybe some people know it. I was very in the early stage of Faro and I working in a former company who developed this first scanner type. The name was the IQ Evolution Company and uh, they had a, a substitute company. They called him IQ Sun. And uh, we will look that we find a picture and to this in. Also we had these first IQ Sun scanner. And then um, we had uh, this machine type. And there we had two series. We had the LS series. So this was the first they coming out in 2004, five. Um, and then later they bring the 120. And I will explain you a little bit more. And this is the nice, I put this a little bit on site uh, on, on this scanner. Because this scanner had in, uh, the, was the, had in the idea to be modular, to have different model that you can change it. And this is very interesting because this gives us the option that we can detool the scanner and you can see a little bit more like a scanner works. Like we have a scanner, it's working typically. We have uh, here is the sensor inside where it's a laser, uh, um, it's a laser diode who send laser light out and over the big optic this come in with this mirror, this is uh, turning and uh, uh, brings the beam in the room and bring the light back to this optic part. And we can open also uh, this part too. And um, this is very interesting also from the idea is you see like they had this idea to be model, but it have to be very accurate and calibrated. For this, they use these two holes and the two calibration sticks to bring them together. But it was a long time issue that you was really stable. This was in the early stage, um, very complicated. Um, and looks here, that is the mirror module. And that is where the laser beam come out. And over the big optic, uh, the laser beam come in. And uh, the difference from the 880 series to the LS120, what we have here is in the 880s, the, there's a, there was an analog, um, an analog um, sensor who brings this optical light in a digital data stream. And in the photon series, what we have here is this in ship then. As it's a digital, the first was an analog digital wonder, and now we have a digital um, uh, uh, emitter. And uh, this gives um, the option to get a much better point cloud, uh, less noise, um, more accurate. And with this one, they also have to change the measure measurement system. And they bring them to a system they call them hypermodulation. That was uh, also the sh um, a technical change between 880 and the Photon 120 series. Uh, I don't know if any, um, the basic what you see here in these big parts is the same principle what you have now in the, the new scanner version. Uh, it was the, the first developments. And then they make uh, things better, bring additional sensors inside. But coming back, we have another module. And uh, this one, uh, it's here. This is the PC, yeah. I think here you have now a Raspberry PC or a, like a very small one. But this was our PC to this time and was not better as, I don't know, a part of PC what you have somewhere here, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a motor, it's something what you don't can change. But you can see it um, was a very interesting construction, was very robust, many people like it. This is a CNC frame. Um, the whole stuff what you see here was uh, to this time was 100,000 euros, over 100,000 dollars. 
$120,000. Um, only the frame, the building the frame was more expensive in doing this as building the complete scanner now or uh, like every new scanner. I think only the, the metal frame was was CNC cut it was more expensive as the uh, a new scanner uh, is now in development. Uh, yes, see that is the typical for mini for miniaturization. And uh, to do the scanning, we need also some extra accessories. Yeah, first one is did we have VLAN? Yeah, we had VLAN too. I will show you how this VLAN was working to this time. We had here official accessory cases, and um, I have to check out. And our VLAN was this device. Uh, we put in Fritz stick here, and that was the VLAN to this time if you want to use it with VLAN. Uh, and then another point um, was here is no battery in the system. You know, here you have your battery in your scanner inside. Here was no battery. The battery was additional. It was a 10 to 15 kilo pack. Yeah. Uh, and this one was also 15 kilos. means your minimum weight was 30 kilos to be mobile. And now you have five kilograms uh, to go out to scanning. And then and another very important point was, this was a complete different laser class. Uh, I think you can see it here that they uh, give us um, information. You have to be careful. And to this time, if you was the scan operator, you need this nice uh, goggles. This is a laser protection goggle. This was the latest version because the first one was more from laboratory. They're looking like the, I don't know, the face put, uh, the, the eye protection now from coronavirus uh, stuff. This was then more the, the um, sun-like edition. Um, and you have to use it if you was in the closer area to the scanner to protect your eyes. Because all scanner to that time was 3R scanner. And they was not eye safe. Now the most scanners are class one scanner and they are eye safe. This means actual scanner, we don't need this one. Yeah, uh, I think that's a little bit or what I like to see it's uh, because that's uh, to that time was this state of the art scanner. Yeah, there was other scanners there was more bigger and the most other ones was similar like ZF scanners and uh, there was also from the size similar. Uh, and then in, I think it was in 2011 come the first uh, Faro small scene out. Uh, well, like they had the size like this one, there was a little bit different. Um, there was also 3R, not laser class one and some other stuff. And to this time, this was really the game, the game changer because some saying now they have the game changer on the market. Now, in my opinion, this was the really game changer coming from this crappy big stuff from all scanner to this small one. And uh, that's changed the industry. That brings like the, I don't know, they're selling in one year the same number like they're selling before in the whole life cycle of these LS880 Photon 120 series. And I can imagine where they bring them out in 2011. The competition was such surprised that they say, oh, that's, that's, that's not real. This is a fake machine. There's not working, but there was working, yeah. In this case, uh, yeah, we, um, I will close the session. Uh, I hope that you maybe get some good information how scanner come from, how scanning was in the past. And in, uh, I will say in this, uh, a lot of fun with your scanners. And uh, to next time, um, look for our channel, uh, push the button and make your like. Any questions, we are open to answer it. Bye bye.